Driving Bremer, and uh, you're watching Feed My People Joy. And today I want to go over a scripture. I want you to ask yourself if you think you're righteous, if you're earning your righteousness. I want you to take a look at this scripture here. It's um, Luke 18. It says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought to seek, ought to pray and not faint, uh, saying, There was a certain judge. Uh, okay, sorry, let's go down further. Let's go to Luke 18.6. Uh, let's go even further. Let's go to 9. Also, he spoke a parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Okay, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Collect, collector. Um, the Pharisee stood and prayed like this. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this tax collector. Tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes all and all of all I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off would not even so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, I got excited when I found this scripture because I believe what the Word of God says, that you're saved by the blood of Jesus. You stay saved by the blood of Jesus. You did nothing to get your salvation. You get nothing. You do nothing to get out of your salvation. Um, it's by grace, not by works. So, I got excited because God pointed this scripture out to me. It says, He spoke to them a parable... Uh, um, okay, he spoke to the he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Okay, now my question to you is: Do you trust in yourself that you're righteous? This is what he said. The man who said, "I thank you that I don't do this. I am not like other men. I I fast twice a week. Twice a week. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of everything I possess." Okay, I, you could say, I haven't committed adultery. I haven't killed anyone. I haven't pulled a cat's tail. I haven't kicked the dog. I haven't whipped my kids too hard. I haven't thought bad thoughts. I haven't done this. You know, so you're justifying yourself. It's all about you. Salvation is all about Jesus. It's not about what you do. It's not about your obedience and your faith. It's about Jesus' obedience and the faith that you have in what he did for you. It's not trusting yourself like it talks about in uh, Luke 18, 9 through, um, uh, fifth, through to 15. <clears throat> so, are you trusting in your own righteousness? Or do you know that before you were even born, Jesus died for all your sins before you even did one sin? So when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, you're not asking him... He's not forgiving you for your sins that you committed up to that point and everything afterwards you have to earn it. No, before you commit it once and he already died and he paid for all your lifetime of sins. So when you ask Jesus to be your Lord and come into your life, you are being forgiven for all your lifetime of sins and you don't earn salvation. What happens is when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, he forgives you for your whole lifetime of sins. But you should no longer be condemned because your sins are forgiven. And I lost my train of thought right there. Okay. Your sins are forgiven. And the fruit, I know what I want to say, the fruit of knowing that you're staying saved, because it's not by works, is that you're staying saved, is obedience and right thoughts and right living. So you see, the fruit of knowing you're right with God because of his obedience and what his works is the result of you being obedient and you having doing and thinking right thoughts. So my name is Robin Bremer and I'll see you tomorrow.